children of the ghetto. A child is born in the world without any care. Some go through life not finding love anywhere. Some die so young, not even reaching the age of five. Most are not given a chance to live or learn how to survive. Children of the ghetto, some are yours and some are mine. But does it really matter? Because they still need love all the time. Children of the ghetto, a fatherless child, with no male figure to guide you, the streets will be your home where you will live and run wild. Children of the ghetto, my heart goes out to you. Seeing so many young lives taken will make the strongest black man feel sad and blue. Children of the ghetto, you are our future, precious diamonds and pearls. You are the one that may see tomorrow, both ghetto boy and ghetto girl, children of the ghetto. So today I'm here with first time published author, Mr. Donald Shakir. Um, how you doing, sir? How you doing? Um, so for those of, of us who don't know you, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? My name is Donald Shakir. I'm a Muslim. Um, I was born in Baltimore, raised in Baltimore when I had a chance to be out in, in the city. I've spent a very, very large portion of my life incarcerated. And really, I'm just getting back in the city and learning Baltimore. So, so let me ask you this, being incarcerated, do you feel like you was rehabilitated or do you feel like the system prepared you for what I call the real world? No, rehabilitation is something that has to come from within the individual. The individual has to decide that he wants a change. The system doesn't change a person. It's what the person wants for himself, what type of life this individual wants for himself. Prison has nothing to do with it. Prison is just a holding place. Okay, so you're a first time published author. And you have a book out called Self Expressions. How did you get into writing and what was it about wanting to be a published author? I got into writing my book. My book is self-expression. I got into writing during my incarceration. Uh, one night, I wanted to give my mother, her birthday was that, you know, during that week. And I wanted to give her a present. I couldn't give her a present because I was incarcerated. So I said to myself, let me sit down and write something. Maybe I can write a poem that she would like. And the very first poem that I wrote was called A Mother's Love. And I never really got a chance to give it to her because she passed away. But that was the very, she really influenced me with that poem to write. And I didn't stop writing. I continued writing. And right now, today, I'm still writing. Do, do you feel like writing is therapeutic? Writing was very, writing, for me, writing was very therapeutic. Um, during my incarceration, I had, I had to find ways to relieve myself of stress. And writing was what was my number one way of relieving myself from stress besides weightlifting. I had to, I had to really write because it took me out of the prison. Writing actually took me out of the prison. When I lay down and start writing, the prison was just the place where I wrote. It was no. It was no longer a jail. It was. It was just a resting place where I sat down and I wrote something. So your book, self expresses You know, working in the school system, uh, a lot of times we don't have a lot of books that represent the black culture, and a lot of times with the generation they don't like to read 
because a lot of times they don't feel like that the books are related to them or that they can relate to the book. Do you feel self-expressions is a book that high schoolers or middle schoolers or college kids could relate to? I don't feel as though that is my book, Self-Expression. I don't feel as though it, that it would be something that middle schoolers or high, high schoolers even should read because I have a I have a lot of poetry in there that deals with with love relationships. Um, college students they they would they would definitely enjoy reading it, but like I said, middle middle schoolers and high schoolers, no, I don't I wouldn't want them to read it. High schoolers may be able to read it, but um. I have a lot of I have a lot of stuff that I wrote that's dealing with relationships and I wouldn't want them to read it. I really wouldn't. So who published your book? My book was published by Selena Pope and Company. Um, I was introduced to Selena by a friend of mine, Miss Leah Green. And it was a very it was a very good meeting. I was very pleased when I met her because of the results that I immediately got. Okay. So now that you're published, um, what's what's your next step? Well, I have I have several I have several things that I'm that I'm doing. Um, I want to to do an autobiography of myself. But I also, I'm a singer as well, and I also want to go into the studio and record. I have a couple of songs that I wrote that I want to record. And I think this autobiography will take some time because for me, um, I, never, I never was the type of person who could sit down and write something all the way through. I might write a little bit and I might continue maybe a two or three days later. What, what, what advice would you give other young men who are struggling or straddling with, you know, surviving life? That's a hard, that's a, that's, that is, for those who are struggling, the young brothers who are struggling, and I see so many of them out there they need to they need to find an identity because i don't see them having an identity they need to to get into things that are positive they need to get off the street corners because it's not a, it's not a good lifestyle um You, you said you had a poem that you wrote to your mother. Would you be able to recite that for us? I would have to read it to Oh, yeah, read it. If you can read it, sure. If you have it with you. Yes. Um, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. Well, it's, it's okay. But I also, I also wrote a poem for my mother when she passed away that I thought was, was better and, and more suitable. Well, let's hear that one. My mother was my, my, my best friend. Um, this is called I Miss You. I'm writing to you, but you're no longer here. My mother, my friend, for me, you'll always be near and dear. I see your face in my thoughts and my dreams. So real in my mind, everything still seems. Mother dear, you will always be a part of my world. And that's from my heart because you are my number one girl. You guided me through life as no one else could do. You gave me strength and support when there was no one else there. You believed in me and in my struggles that no one else wanted to share. Mother dear, you gave me life and you gave me a lot of hope. 
Now everything, so, everything seems so distant and far away beyond my scope. I never got the chance to say goodbye or even to show you how much I really cared. All I know is that when I look around and call home, my mother is no longer there. My mind travels back into time and I'm seeing your face. You have so much love that could never be replaced. You held my hand when I was a child and you tried to keep me near, but there was a wild side of me that wouldn't let me see or hear. My mother, my friend, physically you are no longer here, but still I feel your presence always seeming so near. I just wanted to let you know how I feel and what's on my mind and to let you know that you will be thought about often, if not all the time. I miss you. Indeed, thank you. And you have it, folks. Both publishers, nor its author, Mr. Donald Shakur, with Self-Expressions.